back in Deuteronomy 32, Moses said, in the land you cross over to possess. Jesus delivered us from the power, let me put it like this, from the power in the kingdom of darkness, he delivered us. Amen. He translated us. He didn't leave us there. He, he brought us, brought us in this new kingdom. The major thing that works, the only thing that works, that helps you, is to love one another. This is exactly what Moses said to them. He said, the land you cross over to possess, there is a law that works there. People say to you, anointing for this, anointing for that, anointing for that. I believe in the anointing. I anoint people also. Praise the Lord. But you see, if the word is not in you, the anointing is just an oil. Are you hearing me? The anointing oil only works with the inherent word of God in you. The communion works with the word of God in you. Without the word, it's just a drink. Are you hearing me? Now, if you want to frame a word of prosperity, you need a word. If you want to frame the word of divine health, you need a word. If you want to frame the life of joy and peace, it's in the word. Are you hearing me? People go to drink to forget their problem. But they never forget. It actually complicates their problem. People go to watch football to forget their trouble. Football is only 90 minutes, right? Troubles will come over. They will come back again. People will stay home late so that their children and their wife will sleep before they come home so that to avoid trouble. And they will roam about the city till 12 midnight and they decide to come home believing that their wife and children should be asleep so that they can just quietly sleep. And as they open the door and the woman is sitting opposite the door. Where are you coming from? They say, oh my God. Oh Lord, why now? Why me? Praise the Lord. You do what? But you can walk out a good family with the word of God. Hey, I like that. You can walk out a good family from the world. Every journey of disobedience opens the door of affliction. In the land where we are living, in Zion, devil cannot afflict you except if you invite him. Just like Nigerian police cannot enter the American embassy without invitation, no devil will enter into you except if you open the door. overpower us again this is where they were translated are you hearing me praise the lord you see this word translated is a latin word from translates or translation are you hearing me i know that your understanding of translation is like i said now i am speaking now somebody is translating in german language to somebody so you understand that aspect of translation isn't it Praise the Lord. But that is where we miss it. Now, you said that your translation said that. Come on, Ife. What do you say your translation said again? Brought us. Praise the Lord. We were delivered from the kingdom of darkness. Now, as we were delivered in the kingdom of darkness. Listen. Listen to me. Because this is what we connect to what I said to you, cross over to possess. Are you getting it? Back in Deuteronomy 32, Moses said, in the land you cross over to possess. Jesus delivered us from the power, let me put it like this, from the power in the kingdom of darkness. He delivered us. Amen? He translated us. He didn't leave us there. He, he brought us, brought us. The 
the original word that translates to that translated us is carry across from Latin. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? The, you see, it's important to understand the word of God. The word in King James translated translate us into the kingdom of his dear son or the kingdom of, his, of, the, of the son of his love. It means carry a cross. Amen. Jesus did not just deliver us from the power of darkness. He did not just deliver us from the kingdom and the power there. What he did was also as he defeated and he was living. Jesus carried, shout hallelujah. He said, if I leave you here, the devil will still come again. And so, as he delivered us, and Jesus was about to leave that place because he defeated them already. He said, I'm going to carry all my trophies with me. And who are the trophies? We are the trophies. Praise the Lord. He said, I'm not going to leave them behind again. I'm not going to leave them behind. I am going to carry them and then cross them over to a place where the devil cannot touch them anymore. Are you hearing me? And so when we read, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had carried us across, carried us across into the kingdom of his dear son. Are you getting it? We were dwelling in darkness. We were captives to the forces of darkness. And the Bible said in Commission chapter 2, he defeated them. He made the public show of the enemy. And he delivered us from their stronghold. And when Jesus was about to leave, he said, ah, if I should leave them, the enemy will overpower them again. What do I do? Let me carry them with me. Praise the Lord. He carried us across into his own kingdom. Kingdom of light. Kingdom of love. He brought us in there. And then Moses said to the Israel, as Jesus said unto us, a new commandment I give unto you. In this kingdom, what works in this kingdom is love. Praise the Lord. He says, it doesn't matter what your life used to be. He said, but in this kingdom, what works? He said, love one another as I have loved you. Walk in my love. Walk in my light. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so he says, in this new kingdom, the major thing that works the only thing that works, that helps you, is to love one another. This is exactly what Moses said to them. He said, the land you cross over to possess, there is a law that works there. He said, take the word of God, you can prolong your days. Take the word of God, you can live longer. He says, by faith we understand that the words were framed. Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. Now, if you want to frame a word of prosperity, you need a word. If you want to frame the word of divine health, you need a word. If you want to frame the life of joy and peace, it's in the word. Are you hearing me? People go to drink to forget their problem, but they never forget it actually complicates their problem. People go to watch football to forget their trouble. Football is only 90 minutes, right? Yes, sir. Troubles will come over. They will come back again. People will stay home late so that their children and their wife will sleep before they come home so that to avoid trouble. And they will roam about the city till 12 midnight and they decide to come home believing that their wife and children should be asleep so that they can just quietly sleep. And as they open the door, and the woman is sitting opposite the door, where are you coming from? He said, oh my God. 
Oh, Lord, why now? Why me? Praise the Lord. It won't work. But you can work out a good family with the word of God. Hey, I like that. You can work out a good family from the word. Did you hear what I just said? You can produce a good marriage with the word. You can manufacture, you can create a good marriage with the word of God. I wish we get this. I wish I can just, like the Bible says, carry us across. I wish I can carry the word of God and just keep your head. I said, now go and leave it. Praise the Lord. You see, people say to you, anointing for this, anointing for that, anointing for that. I believe in the anointing. I anoint people also. Praise the Lord. But you see, if the word is not in you, the anointing is just an oil. Are you hearing me? The anointing oil only works with the inherent word of God in you. The communion works with the word of God in you. Without the word, it's just a drink. Are you hearing me? Didn't you hear? Where is the word of the king? Where is the word of the king? If you will understand Colossians chapter 1 from verse 12 to 13, if you will understand it, your life will be different. Are you hearing me? How can the devil be pursuing you when you are no longer in his kingdom? Does it make sense? Um, let, let, let's put it like this. Let's say, um, Mama Cecilia, right? Your house is just up the road, right? And then, and then you tell people that pastor is pursuing you in your house. And they say, but pastor is here. He said, no, but pastor is pursuing me. But they say, pastor is in church. He said, you don't know what I'm talking about. It is difficult to believe. Why? Because I'm not there. Amen? And I cannot be there without your consent. Even if I come there, does not mean I can enter there. True or false? Yes, that's true. I can actually walk to her house, I know the place, and I can knock, and then she can say yes. Saying yes does not mean I have access. Are you hearing me? But saying yes gives me a signal that I may be let in. Are you hearing me? But that does not equal to coming. Now, the Bible said Jesus has carried us across. He has taken us from the kingdom of darkness to his own kingdom. Let me pray like that. He relocated us. Are you hearing me? If you move from one house to another one, will your former landlord come and ask rent? Think about it. It will be foolishness, isn't it? He was once your landlord. And now you have moved. And now, you have moved. Isn't it? No matter how much you like him, will you pay him rent? Doesn't make sense. And the Bible said, we used to reside, we used to live in the kingdom of darkness. Read it in the Bible. But Jesus has delivered us. Not only did he deliver us, he translated us. Praise the Lord. Another word there is deportation. And many of you, you don't know what deportation is. Let me explain deportation to you. If they say that um, you are going to leave Nigeria, let's say Nigerian government is deporting somebody from Nigeria or from Germany, a German government wants to deport you. You travel in style, though it's deportation. Are you hearing me? They will give you an escort. Though it's deportation. Do you understand the power of the word translate? It says that you, the, the, you are no longer allowed to stay here. 
They say, you must live here. Praise the Lord. And then while you are living, they give you special escort. They put you in a police car. Wee, 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 wee. Praise the Lord. You may be deported, but you are on escort, VIP. Praise the Lord. It may be the only last day you spend in that country, but you are living in style. Are you hearing me? Say what you want to say. Deportation or not, but you are living with style. And so when you come back and tell the story, you know, police car came to carry me. They brought me right to the aircraft. And usually, before anybody will enter, they will allow the deportee. Seriously. Are you hearing me? They will allow the deportee to enter first. They will take you right to the back of the aircraft. Sit you there. And for, even if it was for five minutes, you will enjoy the whole aircraft by yourself. Nobody else is in that aircraft. Are you hearing me? You are what? In deportation. And that is the word translation. Are you hearing me? We were deported because we were no longer allowed to stay in that place. We were no longer allowed to do what? To stay in that place. And so, we didn't just live by ourselves. We didn't struggle to live. The Bible says, Jesus and the angels shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus and the angels, they carried us with honor. They carried us, oh, in victory parade. Hallelujah. I can imagine the devil watching like this, so they are escaping. They are going. They are going truly. They are going. And we were carried like that across and over to a new land. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we got to the new place, the Lord said, welcome home. He said, welcome home. Tell somebody, welcome home. Welcome home. Say, welcome home. welcome home. He says, as you have come home, Remember, everybody has to be under authority here. <laughs> everybody has to be what? You have to live under what? And you say, wow, is that what it means? <laughs> it says, yeah, you have to live by the fruit of the Spirit. Huh? Let's open to Galatians. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, today is a wonderful day. Are you hearing me? Galatians. <laughs> I know his name. I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know his name. I love his name, I love his name, his name is powerful, I love his name, I love your name Lord, I love your name Lord, your name is victorious, I love your Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, God is so sweet. May his name be sweet in your mouth. Amen. May his name be sweet in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. I believe everybody knows this. And so, when we landed into the new kingdom, when we landed into the new kingdom, he says to us, the fruit of the Spirit is what? The first one is what? This is the one everybody knows. The second one is what? Joy. The third one is what? Peace. Another one, long-suffering or patience. Another one, kindness. And I want goodness, and I want faithfulness. 
You go to verse 23. This is what I want to explain to you. Verse, verse 23. What is the first one there? You know, this is the one we don't talk about much. Are you hearing me? Gentleness. Hey. Gentleness. Oh. I wish, I wish we would understand what gentleness is. There is a reason why this one stands out. You see, the things that we easily overlook actually means the most, matters the most. Praise the Lord. Do you know that the way you sit, the way you sit down can tell whether you are a gentle person or not? Are you hearing me? The way you dress can tell whether you are a gentle person or not. Do you know that chaos is a spirit? You know what chaos? Chaos, disorder, everything disorganized. Gentleness. When we were crossed over to the kingdom of his dear son, the Bible says he gave us his spirit. Amen? Amen? And so his spirit manifests through us. All the fruit of the spirit, we are meant to believe it. The reason why I don't want to talk about love today is because everybody knows love. But the real life is powered by the fruit of the spirit. The real life. It manifests the fruit of the spirit. And when you leave it, when you leave it, you see, you can drop something gently or you can drop something carelessly. Amen? You can drive gently or you can drive very what? Very rough. Let me use that word. Amen? Yeah. Remember what I said to you? When you are coming to the new kingdom, Jesus said, in my kingdom, everybody must be under authority. No exemption. And then you have a problem with that. That means you can't just get up and travel anymore. Not that anybody is controlling you, but because you are living according to the kingdom. Amen? Praise the Lord. The devil is not the problem of a believer today. The believer is his own problem. Are you hearing me? And that is why many prayer is not working, because the devil is not... You have relocated from devil's domain, but you are still using the name of the devil to make excuse for your lifestyle, in the new kingdom. The devil has no power in the new kingdom. Are you hearing me? First John chapter 4, verse 4. He says, little children, you have overcome the world. Amen? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He said, you have overcome the world. We are in the world. But we are not under satanic control. But have you ever been able to meditate? How many of you have heard about Vatican, a country called Vatican? How many of you have heard about a country called Vatican? Not many. Where is Vatican? Hello, where is Vatican? It's in Rome, right? Let me help you. Vatican is the country of the... Roman Catholic Church is their own country. It's in Rome. They have their own passport. They have their own money. Yes! Vatican is a country in a country. And Pope is the head of the Vatican. Are you hearing me? Listen. The Italian police cannot go in there and arrest anybody. Now, do you get it? Because it's separated. Even though it is in Italy, even though it is in Rome, but the Roman government have no power over Vatican. They have their currency. 
Yes. They have their own passport. Yes. They have their own head of state. Yes. Well, you don't get it. That is very far. How many of you know that we have American embassy in Nigeria? There's American embassy. Okay. Do you know that that American embassy, Nigerian police cannot enter there and arrest anybody? Never. Do you know that? Uh, you don't know. Yes, you can't. Listen, Nigerian military cannot enter the American embassy, no matter what. They can't. I begin to understand it. And so, American embassy is in Lagos, in Nigeria, but Nigerian government, they are powerless over that embassy. If they have problem with that embassy, Nigeria have to contact America direct in America, not the embassy here. Are you hearing me? Yes. Look, th there's no other way I can explain that we have carried over. We've been crossed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Are you hearing me? Do you know that even the cars that belong to the embassy, last man cannot impound it. Traffic warden cannot give them ticket. No, do you understand? When God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because we don't know what belongs to us, and we have not cared to understand, American embassy is even too far, because you can say American embassy is big and they have money. Let's take the country of Sudan, or Rwanda, or Republic of Benekotonu, are you hearing me? Their embassy in Lagos, no police officer can enter there and make an arrest. It's not allowed. Even when they carry their diplomatic baggage, listen, their bag, through the airport. Are you hearing me? No custom, no immigration is allowed to open it. That's why it's called diplomatic baggage. Are you hearing me? We are more than diplomatic baggage. Do you understand? The passport we carry is greater than diplomatic passport. Where we live is greater than the Vatican or the embassies. I wish, Lord, help your people to get this today. Get this today. Remember when God visited Adam and called, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard your voice and I hid uh, because I was naked. What did God ask him? Who told you that you are naked? Because it was never supposed to happen. How did you get to here? Then God said, have you eaten what I said you should not eat? The nakedness of a believer is when we eat what we are not supposed to eat. Are you hearing me? The sickness and disease of a believer is when we eat what we are not supposed to eat. Praise the Lord. This is going to surprise you. When, <laughs> when the devil tempted Adam in the garden, what did he use to tempt Adam? What was it that the devil used to tempt Adam? Sorry? Listen now. Please, let's think. Let's think. When the devil tempted Adam in the garden, right? That was God's garden, isn't it? What did he use to tempt Adam, the first Adam? Hello? Huh? Some of you say Eve. Yes? What? Promises. What did Adam use? What did Satan use to tempt Eve and Adam? It was the fruit that God said you should not eat, right? Who owns that fruit? God. Not the devil, right? So, I'm coming. Just follow me. Not, not the devil, right? So, the devil only used what belongs to our father, to tempt our first fathers, right? 
and they believed his word. It was not the fruit that was the problem. It was the believing of the devil. When the second Adam was tempted, what was used to tempt the, first, the second Adam? Food, right? And then the world and the things in it. Listen now. In the beginning, Satan had no food. Are you hearing me? Nothing to tempt man except the tree of right of the knowledge of good and evil. God said we should not eat. It belongs to our papa. Right? And so he used our father's property to tempt our first fathers and they fall for it, right? They eat, right? And now the second Adam comes. When the second Adam came now, when devil was to tempt him, devil was loaded now. <laughs> he has become loaded. He has become the god of this world. He has food to tempt. He said, command these stones to be turned bread if you are the son of God. Are you hearing me? He said, fall from this and worship me. He says, I will give you all this. If you force him, I will give you all the kingdom of the and all this, I will give to you. He says, uh, uh, about divine protection, he said, fall down, for he has given his angel a charge over you. So the three temptations was food, protection, and prosperity. In the beginning, devil had none of them. But now, when man fell, he took what belongs to man. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, when God created everything, he gave it to man. He said, I give all to you. And so, we got everything from the beginning. We had everything from the beginning. And so, the devil, wanting to get something, wanting to get something, he tricked man. Man sold his birthright to him. Man sold the birthright. And so, now when the second Adam came, Adam was a little, uh, sorry, Satan was a little bit richer than before. Now he had food. Now he had properties. Not ground anyway. Are you hearing me? Not ground. And so he used what belongs to man to tempt the second man. But the second man had revelation of what belongs to him. Praise the Lord. The second Adam was knowledgeable enough in his inheritance. And so, when the devil was tempted, he rebuffed the devil. He said, these things, these things are nothing. Are you hearing me? He said, these things are rubbish. What I have is greater than all these things you are offering me. This is the, this is the revelation that the first Adam lacked. He need not eat the, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. All he needs to do is to depend on what the word, word of God says. And Moses said, in this new land, you will live by the word. You will prolong your days by the word. And then he says, let every soul be under authority. Amen. There are laws that if you follow, Satan will never attack you. Because he has no right. Remember what I said. You cannot even open a diplomatic baggage. You can't. You cannot even enter there and arrest somebody. So, if you are born of God, the devil cannot strike you inside. How will he come in? No, how will he come in? As long as we live by the Spirit. In fact, I want to read something to us. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 25 together. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us what? Walk in the Spirit. Is that your Bible? And then it says, the fruit of the Spirit. Is gentleness. You don't know how important gentleness is. 
as a fruit of the Spirit. It means that, it means that you are commandable. Are you hearing me? It means that you are what? Commandable. I said to you last Sunday, I said if you cannot be commanded to do what is right, you cannot be commanded to receive what is right. And that includes healing. And that includes healing. I, I, I want to give you an example of gentleness. Uh, Second Samuel chapter 18 from the Old Testament. Second Samuel chapter 18. Shout hallelujah. We are doing well with the time. Make sure that you attend the Easter program. Insight into redemption. Oh, please, whatever happens, make sure you attend this program. It will bless you. We are going to talk about, you know, these things I'm just mentioning here, we're going to talk about it in detail. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have the flyer here by the grace of God. Attend this program. It will transform you. It will bestow upon you grace. You will be a different person. Praise the Lord. So we have that program Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You, you see, until you understand redemption, you cannot leave it. Amen. Until you understand what you were redeemed from and what was belonging to you originally, how can you demand it? Praise the Lord. When you know you are right, when the police stop you, you talk back, you fight back, isn't it? You say, resist the devil. When you know what belongs to you, you can resist the devil in any capacity, isn't it? And you need to attend that program. It will bless your life. It will transform your life. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Understand redemption and meditation. I assure you, just within six months, your life will take a ride up to the highest. Praise the Lord. Attend that program. Don't miss it for any excuse. It's not one of the programs I said to you, come and then um, you have breakthrough. No, no, no. The breakthrough is already there. Come understand how to take it. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Where did I say you should open? Second, then you are with me. Amen. This is about David and his son Absalom. We all know that Absalom was the son of David that wanted to dethrone the father. He wanted to kill the father. Praise the Lord. Actually, he unseated the father from the throne. He dethroned the father. And the father was a fugitive on the run. A king. A king was on the run. So now, David sent his armies to go after Absalom and his army. But but verse 5, everybody look into your Bible, verse 5. Now, he sent three battalions, three different battalions of soldiers to go after his son, Absalom. But David called the three leaders, the three commanders, the three commanders. This is where I want us to be because of time. He called three of them, listen to this. Now, the king had commanded Joab, Abishai, and Itai, saying, Saying, what did David say? He said, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people had when the king gave all the captains orders concerning Absalom. He didn't just call three of them. He said it openly. He said the three commanders, the king is in charge of the army. Like Buhari is the commander in chief, praise the Lord. So the king Commander in chief said to the three captains or three generals, he said, Please, you are going to war. You are going to war. Concerning the person, Absalom, I know he is a terrorist. I know he is a villain. He said, But concerning him, don't deal with him according to the military. Are you hearing me? He's there. He said, For my sake, he said, because of me, when you see Absalom, deal gently, deal gently with him. And so the king pleaded with the three generals that he was sending to war. And all the people had it. 
that the king have said, do what you want with all his soldiers, but concerning my son, concerning my son, for my sake, deal gently, praise the Lord. And I said to you, gentleness is one of the fruit of the spirit, but many Christians don't walk in gentleness. That's the problem. You may have a reason not to be gentle, but that is not justifiable in the sight of God. That's not justifiable. Uh, you see, the word of God, the word of God is greater than your reasons. And we're going to see what's happened now. Okay. In verse 9, let's go to verse 9. Now, remember what King said. For my sake, deal gently. Praise the Lord. Then, Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom rode on a mule. The mule went under the thick boughs of a great terebinth tree. And his head caught in the terebinth. So he was left hanging between heaven and earth. And the mule which was under him went on. Praise the Lord. Now a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, I just saw Absalom hanging in a terebinth tree. So Joab said to the man who told him, You just saw him? And why, didn't you, why did you not strike him there to the ground? The man said, I would have, sorry, Joab said, I would have given you 10,000 shekels of silver and a belt if you had killed Absalom. You saw Absalom hanging on a tree. He had long hair. Absalom had long hair. So he was on, the, on his mule. And as, well, as he was riding the mule, something like a horse, and the tree his head coiled on the tree. That's to explain what the scripture is saying. And the horse moved. And so he was hanging between heaven and earth. He was, was hanging. And then one of the soldiers saw it. He said, this is Absalom. He went and told one of the generals called Joab. He said, I saw Absalom. He's hanging on the tree. He said, you saw him? Did you kill him? He said, no, I didn't kill him. Because, because I heard what the king said. Joab said, if you had killed him, I would have rewarded you. I would have honored you. Verse 12. But the man said to Joab, but the man said to Joab, though I were to receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, I will not raise my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing, the king commanded you and Abishai and Itai, saying, beware lest any of you touch the young man, Absalom. The man said, no, even if you give me a thousand shekels, I will not do it. I will not do it. Why will I disobey the king? The king said, we should deal gently with Absalom. And now you are telling me, if, you are, if I kill Absalom, that you will reward me. The man said, I will not do it. I, I have the word of the king. And Jesus is the king of kings. We have the word of the king inherent in us. Are you hearing me? The word of the Lord is in us. The Bible says, verse 13, Otherwise I would have died falsely against my own life, for there is nothing hidden from the king, and you yourself would have set yourself against me. Praise the Lord. The man disobeyed. The man refused to disobey. He, he, he chose to obey the word of the king. But the king didn't talk to him directly. The king spoke to the generals. And he was just a soldier. Praise the Lord. Alright, let's continue. Verse 29. Let's go to verse 29. No, that would be too far. Anyway, let us read from verse... 17. Are we there? And you will not understand if I read for it. Let's go back to 14. Then Joab said, I cannot linger with you. And he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through Absalom's heart. While he was still alive in the midst of the treband tree, he used three daggers in one translation. He put it through the heart of Absalom. And ten young men who bore Joab's armor surrounded Absalom and struck and killed him. They killed him in a merciless way. Praise the Lord. And so when they killed him, they also buried him. Praise the Lord. 
And meanwhile, David was at home waiting for the news about the battle. He was waiting. The Bible said there was a messenger. The normal messenger that goes. The messenger wanted to go and tell David what has happened. Joab said, you don't go. You don't go today. He said, but I am the messenger. He said, no, today you will not go. I will send a different messenger because I know what you will do when, when you go to the king. You can read the entire this thing. He sent somebody else. The Bible said a Kushite or an Ethiopian. He sent somebody else that was not a messenger. He said, go to the king. Tell the king that we have defeated Absalom. The Bible said, while the guy was going, going, the normal messenger of the king said, please let me go. I beg you, let me go. After the guy has gone a while, Joab said, okay, you can go now. Knowing that he will not meet up. The Bible said the guy took a shortcut. Overtook the guy and got to David before the guy. Praise the Lord. And then he went. This is from verse 29. Praise the Lord. And as he got to David, they were talking about the news of the battle. The, news about, the, the king said, forget, forget. What about Absalom? They were still saying, all the king's enemy will die. All this. The king said, what about Absalom? What about Absalom? We are very much like that. We say to the Lord, we did this, we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that. And God said, what about my spirit? Was it done by my way or your way? What have you done? Let's read. Let's read verse 29. The king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahinas answered, When Joab sent the king's servant and me, your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I did not know what it was about. They refused to tell the king that he was dead. Verse 13. And the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. 31. Just then the Cushite came. And the Cushite said, There is good news, my lord, the king, for the lord hath avenged you this day of all those who rose against you. Verse 32. And the king said to the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? It wasn't the victory that mattered to David. What mattered was my instruction was it kept? My word, did you follow it? My command, do you follow it? You may have the victory. You may have the testimony. But how did you obtain it? And all that David said is that, what about the gentle dealing to Absalom? What about the gentle dealing? Did you obey me? Did you honor me? I said for my sake, deal gently with Absalom. Praise the Lord. And the king said to the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? So the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise against you to do harm be like, the, be like that young man. And the king understood that Absalom is dead. Praise the Lord. Verse 32, 33. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and David wept. And as he went, he said thus, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son, my son. Eventually, the victory meant nothing to David because the instruction, I wish we can understand the way the things of God moves. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandment. Praise the Lord. You want to travel on Sunday, you call your pastor to inform your pastor, and your pastor says, don't go. Don't go. You say, pastor, I just wanted to tell you, I'm already on the way. But pastor said to you, don't go. Are you hearing me? He said to you, don't go. And you say, why? He said, I don't have a reason, but don't go. You know, we think that we know it all. We think that because, ah, because you are 50 years old, you can do what you want. That is, that is the devil speaking to you. Let me say to you, the church is the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? The pastor is the under-shepherd of Christ. Are you hearing me? When you disobey your pastor, you are disobeying Christ directly. Are you hearing me? You need to understand the way the things of the Spirit works. You want to travel, 
Pastor said, don't go. You chose to go. You have disobeyed the highest spiritual authority in your life. And you open the door for the devil. Straight. Every journey of disobedience opens an entrance of affliction. Every journey of disobedience opens the door of affliction. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Amen? In the land where we are living, in Zion, devil cannot afflict you except if you invite him. Just like Nigerian police cannot enter the American embassy without invitation. No devil will enter into you except if you open the door. And many a times we open the door. Do you understand? You pass through the door, you bang the door. Boah! It's a reflection of who you are in the spirit. Are you hearing me? The noise produced, the noise you produce when you move is an echo of what you are in the spirit. I talk to people, don't bang the door. They don't understand why I say it. You can make an excuse why you bang the door. You are banging the door, it's a reflection of your spirit. You are lawless inside. You are indisciplined. You are uncontrollable. That is why you cannot just close the door gently. Does it make sense for you to bang the door? It doesn't. Gentleness is one of the fruit of the spirit. No, it's one of the fruit of the spirit. The way you bang the door is the way you will drive on the road automatically. Are you hearing me? Everyone is quiet now because the message is coming home now. It's registering. Ajawa is hearing me. Praise the Lord. He drives differently when he carries me. Because he knows he won't dare it. But when I'm not in the car, he's loose. He will drive. Praise the Lord. Even before you open your mouth and say, I'm a Christian, your actions can tell us whether you are born again or not. Do you get it? If the door slipped through your hand as an accident, that is understandable. You say, oh, it was a mistake then even you will be sorry that it happened. When you now try to explain it, explain it. Something is wrong with you. Remember, your environment is a reflection of your spirit. No, do you get what I'm saying? You, are, you live from your spirit. What happens around you is who you are on the inside. Forget the explanation. Bring that chair for me, please. Uh, just bring... One of the chair there. Somebody bring the chair for me, please. Quickly. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Oh, hey, it's nice. Maybe I should sit like this while you post stand though. Praise the Lord. Can you see, see me? You come to you go to a, a first place. A friend. You go to a first place. A first place. You sat down. Ha! Ah, I need water. You are already lawless. You are already lawless. Are you hearing me? No gentle person sits like this. No, no gentle person sits like this. Yeah, get up and see me where. No gentle person. You come to church, you do like this. In church. In church. Are you hearing me? You are seated like this. You are not only lawless, you are rebellious. You know why? In your office, before your boss, you can't sit like that. Can you? No, can you? You dare not. You dare not. But here, before the most high God, before the highest of the highest, the omnipotent and omnipresent, you sat and you crossed your leg. Ah, and God looks at you and says, we will see how you will end. You cross your leg. No, you cross your leg in the house of God. Somebody even said to you, sit where? You say, leave me. What is it? Ah, ah, I'm sorry for you. Many things that are dealing with the Christian is not the devil. Are you hearing me? It's not the devil. 
There is certain fear. Certain fear. Certain fear that should hold you when you enter certain places. I'm telling you the truth. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. And fear to whom fear is due. There are powers we should fear. Are you hearing me? There are powers. Because they carry a lot of authority. I remember our, our lawyer, when people were trying to fight us on this land, some people were trying to fight us. When we bought it, they were trying to fight us. And now, our lawyer has now become a judge. He was then the judge of an appeal court. And so he was the one that wrote the agreement we used to buy some of this land. He wrote it. So when I called him, I said, you are, you are honored, you need to visit. So he came. I said to him, I said, you are honored. You know this land, you, you wrote, you signed the agreement. I said, they are fighting us over it. He said, who? I said, so, 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 family. He said, let them try it and we jail them. Praise the Lord. That was what he said. He said, let them try it. I will do what? Jail them. I said, George, he has the power to send people to jail. Do you get it? He was talking truth. And all you need to do is to carry him to, he, to carry them to, your, to his court. And he said, okay, um, I'm not going to decide this case. Send them to jail. Keep them there till next time. He doesn't need to give you a reason. True or false? Police station alone can put you behind the bar. Isn't it? You go on Friday. When they want to get money from you, they are broke. You said, Oga, okay. it means I say you go stay for us this weekend, though. He said, Ah, Friday, you can't come out on Saturday. You can't come out on Sunday. Money will start speaking. He said, Officer, Officer, <laughs> it has not come to that now. Officer, please. He said, that. He said, the DPO is not around. The person that will give you bail is not around. Except if you are willing to give us money to call him. He may come. How much you call? 5,000. Uh, it's not 500. Okay, go and make the call by yourself. It's okay, okay, 5,000 I will pay. Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. What troubles many Christians is not the devil. It's their ignorance. And that is why prayer has not been able to solve it. Are you hearing me? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Until you get knowledge, until you receive knowledge. Are you hearing me? The way you walk will show whether you are gentle or not. Why can't you just walk like this? Why can't you? Why must you walk like this? I mean, does it make sense? Does it make sense? You alone by yourself. Nobody is with you. Nobody's going. I want them to know that I am a big man. What kind of big man walk like that? This is when lawlessness has taken a root in you. And it's not possible for you to control yourself anymore. Because after gentleness is self control, you have lost both because of your former residence in the kingdom of darkness. Because, and now the spirit is trying to get it back into you. And you are fighting it, fighting it. Are you hearing me? The only reason why you are having problems is because you don't understand the laws that governs the new country where you have moved in. You don't get it. And when you disobey, you think that it is normal. You say, what can they do? Let them do what they want. They will not do anything, but the devil will do it. Are you hearing me? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, pastor will not do anything. We cannot discipline you. But the devil is already dealing with you. No. God said that we honor those that honor me. The Bible said the king cried and wept and wept and wept. And Joab was not moved. Because Joab justifies his action in military. Like the way you justify your action in life. Let's, let's, let's see verse chapter 19. And Joab was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people had it, for the people had it said that day, The king is grieved for his son. Praise the Lord. And you know, 
Joab was not touched. And the people stole back into the city that day as people who are ashamed, still away from the flea of battle. They were now ashamed of what they have done. Verse 4. But the king covered his face, and the king cried out with a loud voice. Cried out, weeping, crying, Oh, my son, Absalom. Oh, Absalom, my son. Oh, Absalom, my son. Look at the action of lawless people. Verse 5. Then Joab came into the house to the king and said, Today, you have disgraced all your servants. Hey. No conscience. Are you hearing me? He said, today you have disgraced all your servants who today have saved your life. The lives of your sons and daughters. The lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines. In that you love your enemies and hate your friends. For you have declared today that you... Listen, listen. Joab didn't even get an idea what King was talking about. And we are like that in many ways. Lawless with explanation. Are you hearing me? It doesn't work with God. It doesn't work. When you go to 1 Kings chapter 2, you, go, you see how Joab ended. Joab ended without honor and disgrace. That's how he ended. He was executed. He was killed. Solomon gave Joab, I said, kill him. He said, the blood he has shed that is on my father's head. Kill him and, and destroy him. That's a general. He ended up in shame. Why? Because of simple disobedience, gentleness. Say, deal gently. I pray you will deal gently in life. Amen. I pray you will deal with self control in life. Amen. This is the way we live. When, you know, praise the Lord. Sometimes, see, listen to this. I will give instruction. I will say, don't do this to Enoch. Thank God Enoch is not here. I will say, don't do this to Enoch. People think that, ah, pastor is overprotecting him, pastor is overspoiling him, pastor is, uh, pastor is, uh, they will say, pastor will laugh and smile. You are to obey the instruction, not to accuse pastor. Praise the Lord. Have you thought about your life relative to that small boy before I said, don't do this? Have you thought about the way you live your life? You are disobedient. And I don't want you to transfer it to him. So I said, when you are with him, deal with him like this. I give the instruction. And many struggle with it. I know. Praise the Lord. Some will wish that pastor is not there. If I deal with you, pastor is not there. I will show you when pastor is not When daddy is not there, you will see. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen to me. That already brought you under judgment. Because of your deception, what you do when I'm here, there, is who you are. And so God judge you from the heart, not from what you do. And so just that alone brings you under judgment. Listen, David said, whatever Absalom has done, because of my sake, be gentle. And so if I say to you, this boy, because of me, be gentle. Anything contrary brings you under judgment. Simple. I don't need to be there. Are you hearing me? I don't need to be there. Praise the Lord. We have a resident pastor in Germany. She is a resident pastor. She is called into that office by God, not by pastor. I only follow the instruction. Whether you obey her or not, you are disobeying God. And God will hold you responsible. Are you hearing me? We have, um, apart from her, we have another pastor that is in charge of one of the micro churches. She is in charge. When you obey her or disobey her, you are disobeying God. And do you know that people are walk, walking about with problems they brought upon themselves by disobedience, not by the devil. They are suffering affliction they brought upon themselves by disobedience. Papa Hagen shared a story. Before we close, I want to share this. He said he had a program. And then the program was dragging. And then in the meeting, the anointing came. God used one man in that and prophesied. And the man did a lot of things. 
Just in that meeting. Ah, Papa Hagen was touched. He said, this man, God have used him mightily. But he had a problem about that. So in the night, he couldn't sleep. After a while, he sat up. He said, Lord, I want to deal with this matter with you. The Lord said, what is it? He said, he said to the Lord, why did you use this brother so well? I saw this brother enter a place he shouldn't enter as a Christian. I saw him enter that place. And I don't think you should use him. He said, but there is a sister in the church. This sister in the church, Papa Hagin said that during lunch, the pastor was discussing this sister with Papa Hagin. And the pastor told Papa Hagin, this sister is so faithful in church. Oh, so obedient, so faithful. And Papa Hagin was happy about the sister. And then Papa Hagin said to the Lord, why didn't you use this sister? At least we know that she's so faithful. Why should you use that man for what he did? God said to him, it is true that that man entered that place you saw. But what you, he did there, you don't know. The man entered there and realized he was in the wrong place and repented and came out. And God said, I forgave him completely. Are you hearing me? He said, but this sister you are talking about, God said, 40 years ago, this sister was about eight we are talking about. To show you, God said, 40 years ago, I gave her an instruction. She refused to follow it. And God said, in 40 years, she has been in rebellion with me. And so I cannot use her. She did it when she was 40. And it stands before God at the age of 80. Listen, time does not forgive sin. Time does not wash away sin. Are you hearing me? The only thing that washes away sin is confession before God. And to ask for forgiveness. And so that sister, even though the pastor talks well about her, the pastor, you know, appreciates her. The pastor says that before God, God will not even as far as use her or speak to her. And that's the way it is with many believers. We are in rebellion with the word of God. We are in disobedience. We don't know. In First Samuel chapter 15, the Bible said that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Go and read it. Rise on your feet. If you can still stand after this. Shout hallelujah. He says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. What is rebellion? Co consistent disobedience. Something that is told you over and over and over, you keep doing it. This is our year of divine conquest. No rebellious person will conquer. No, you will not. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hand. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to know you. I want you to help me to deal with myself in everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice that is going through self-made affliction, self-made afflictions, doors open by the people, by the person. Lord, I'm asking for mercy. Lord, I'm asking for forgiveness. Lord, I'm asking for healing. Lord, I'm asking that the doors be closed today. The doors that has been opened for the enemy, let it be closed. And let the name of the Lord be glorified. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Let there be a newness. Let there be a restoration. Let the anointing begin to work in your life again. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. In Jesus' precious name. Listen, if you are here and you are not born again, you are in rebellion. You are in disobedience. Until you get born again, the word of God will not work in your life. You can hear a message like this and refuse to give your life to Jesus. 
He says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Anywhere you are, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to make your way forward. This is the best thing you can do. This is the best thing you can do. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come forward now. And wherever you are in the micro church or online, just be on your feet. Be on your feet. And I'm going to pray for you and lead you to Christ. If you are here, you want to, please, the rest of you sit down. If you want to give your life to Jesus, this word you have heard has touched your spirit and you see a need for you to turn your life over to Christ. Anybody here, online or in the micro church, just follow me as I pray this prayer. Repeat it after me from wherever you are. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I have heard your word and I have received your word. Lord, I am a sinner. I have come short of your word. Lord, I'm asking for mercy. Lord, I'm asking for forgiveness. Lord, I'm asking that Jesus will come into my life and be Lord over my life and that you will forgive all my sins from today. From today, I make a decision from my heart with my mouth. I believe and I confess that Jesus is the Lord and I give him my life from this day and I make him my Lord and my Savior from this day. Father, I thank you for I am born again. My sins are forgiven. For the Bible said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus, 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 save me from this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer with me, you are born again, you are saved, your sins are forgiven, but you have to follow up you don't get born again and go your way. You get born again. Contact us in the micro church. The leaders will reach out to you online. Please write to us and then we'll be able to give you instruction and then bless you with some books also for free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Let's bring out our tithe and our offering to worship the Lord and honor him. God is good. God is good. Lift up your tithe and your offering. Worship the Lord.